Okay, we're going to continue with the same slide presentation as before. However, now we're looking at the topic of energy. So we would have heard energy before uh, as, a, as a phrase, but uh, it's actually a specific physics term, and uh, it relates to one of the most important physics concepts. So what do we need energy for? We need energy to keep us alive, run machines, and keep warm and cool in summer. What exactly is energy? Uh, let's just have a look at the definition. It's the ability to do work. So any object that has energy has the ability to apply a force to another body and cause that body to move some distance as a result of the application of the force. So you need those two things. You need to apply the force and move it a distance. Energy can actually run out. So if you use it, um, and you've know, got limited supply, it can run out, such as when we've got batteries or humans ourselves, we need food. So when we use when we use our energy, we need to replenish that. There are many, many types of uh, energy, uh, energy in different forms, and this list um, goes through a few of those. You can pause the video now and have a look at a few. Now, when we talk about transferring energy, we can talk about uh, the work energy equivalents. So when one body does work on another body, uh, that first body actually uses up some or all of the energy um, and transfers it to the other body. The amount of energy that body B has gained is equivalent to the amount of work done on body B and is the same as the energy lost by body A. Now I was careful with the words there because in between there are there can be energy losses. Um, the energy hasn't disappeared, it's just lost through other forms such as friction, heat, sound or other means. So just a quick example to help with our explanation. Uh, say if we lift a 5 kilogram object to a height of 2 meters. So the force needed to complete this task is equivalent to mass times gravity. Uh, that's just our formula F equals MA. Uh, now we can easily calculate this because we know the mass and we know the value of gravity. Now when we look at our equation of work which equals force times distance which we talked about before. We can see from the slide that the work is equal to mgh, h being the height, um, and we get a value of 98 joules, where the work is measured in joules. So what we can say there is that it took us um, 98 joules to lift a box above our head, and also that 98 joules was required to lift the box to a height of two meters. Now one of the most important phrases you can remember in physics is this one here on the screen. It's a law of conservation of energy. It's one of the most important and fundamental concepts. So energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can only be transformed from one form to another. What we can infer with this is that energy is neither created, destroyed, uh, all the total energy in the system remains the same. However, it is transformed to other forms. So like I previously mentioned, it might be trans um, it might be transformed to sound, friction, which are considered losses, but the energy is still accounted for. Another example we can use to explain energy is using the sun as our primary energy resource. So the sun radiates heat and light and other forms of uh, waves and it provides all provides all the energy on Earth. So the energy that's required for plants to grow, um, for heat and everything like that comes from the sun. Now, we don't get it for free. The sun actually creates it um, and it is just transferred to us by radiation, light and other means. This diagram shows a great example of energy transformation. So first we've got the energy in the archer. Um, in the archer's arms, he's eating breakfast, he's got some energy inside him. So he's got a, a bow as well, and as he stretches the string back, the bow bends, and energy is stored within the flexing bow. Now, when he releases the string, the um, bow is also released, and uh, it imparts an energy on the arrow. Now, the energy that was previously stored um, in the bow is converted to kinetic energy in the arrow, and what happens is some of it's converted to gravitational energy, and some to the kinetic energy as well. Now when it hits the tree, some of it is converted to sound energy, some is heat energy, and some is also the work done on the tree, say the penetration of the tree and maybe splitting it, splitting the bark. 
Overall, the amount of energy that the archer pulled back um, can be found in the system after he releases the bow, um, just in different forms. Um, none is created or destroyed, it is just transferred. So we've got this little animation here that's describing some uh, energy changes. So we have a look first at our bars that we've got up here that demonstrate how much energy is in the system. So we've got kinetic energy, potential energy due to gravity, the potential energy due to the shot when it's inside the cannon, and we've also got the total energy of the system. So we can see um, initially there is no kinetic energy because the, uh, the shot is not moving. However, we have a lot of potential energy in the form of the gunpowder in the shot. When the shot is fired, the potential energy um, in the cannon is no longer there and it is actually transferred to kinetic energy. So we can see the kinetic energy of the shot um, as it's moving along um, gets greater and greater and it's related to the speed. So the kinetic energy is related very much to the velocity of the projectile. Uh, the potential gravitational energy, we can see by the blue one, is at its highest when it is at the peak, um, being that it is furthest from the ground. Now the next few slides uh, show some more examples which you can view. Uh, I just won't cover in this video. So this slide runs for a derivation for kinetic energy. Um, so let's just consider a body at rest. So initial velocity is zero. And now what we're going to do is have a look at our motion equations and also our work equation um, and combine them to work out the energy of the system. Okay, so when we apply a force to the body and accelerate it, we accelerate it to a final velocity v. And because the body has actually moved some distance s, work has been done to it. So that's the definition. So by doing so, we have given it a kinetic energy because it's moving. Now, by the law of conservation of energy, the work done on the body is equal to the kinetic energy of the body because the energy has transferred. So let's have a look at our equations. Okay, we can rearrange this equation in terms of distance. And also, uh, we can use the force equals mass times acceleration formula to substitute them both into our work formula. So what we get, substitute MA4F, and we substitute this, which is a rearrangement of this equation, um, for the distance. And what we're left with is work equals um, mass times velocity squared on 2. Now, typically, we say uh, half mv squared, and it relates to the kinetic energy, which is equivalent to the work done. Now, this slide provides a derivation for gravitational potential energy. So, consider a mass m, which is raised uh, above the ground to a height uh, near the surface of the Earth. So, we know the force to get the mass to that height is equal to mass times acceleration, um, and acceleration is due to gravity. Now, the distance raised is the height, and we see that using our work formula, uh, we can find that due to the work equivalent uh, is equal to mgh. We can say that um, potential energy due to the height above the ground is equal to mgh.